Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So this year I'm intending to do a lot more YouTube content. So if you're interested in things like .NET, Azure, Docker, Kubernetes, Vim, NeoVim, that kind of thing, then click the subscribe link down below and click that bell icon so you get notified when I create new content. So this video is going to be about source controlling config files in Git and I'm going to be talking about Windows Terminal, my terminal setup. I'm going to be talking about NeoVim and on my Posh and just how I've got all this source control. So this is a recent blog post on my blog, danclock.com. And I'm not going to spend too long here. Let's delve into the terminal and show the code, but just briefly why I've obviously got a lot more confidence that I'm not going to lose my settings because it's source control that's pushed to GitHub. I can transfer them between machines. So I've got a laptop, I've got a desktop, I can move them around. And there's more, my changes are quite intentional. I've got commits for specific configuration changes and I can transfer, oh, I said that one. Um, and yeah, there's definitely more increased, motiva increased motivation to tweak, to make changes, to improve my setup. I'm going to be showing the code for this and just a reference that I'll be showing this script in a bit. It is in the blog post. So, so whilst my Git repository is private, the, the reasons for that is I've got st some stuff I don't want to share in there. You can get most of it. You can infer from this blog post or this video and this, this is useful to copy out and I'll explain this shortly. Last mention, what are dot .files? So you you can see, oh, interesting. That's a typo. And you can see down here, um, we've got some examples of dot .files. A lot of configuration files start with dot, like git config, vimrc. So they've gained the name dot .file. And there's quite a large community online where people share their dot .files on GitHub. So you can look around and yeah, see what people have got configured, as I say, Unfortunately, this isn't public. My one isn't public because I've got stuff in there which I don't want to share. So let's jump over to my terminal. So this is my terminal and we've got some cool stuff in there already. Things like the current path, some git information, timings of my last command. my current Kubernetes cluster that my terminal has context over and some memory information. So if I load up Vim now and we can see, and I will go more in depth into Vim in another video, but I will touch on it in here. But we can see in this Git repository, which I've got source control, I've got my configuration for various things like chocolatey, so some chocolatey packages, Git, my Git config, so I've got not my aliases there, uh, my diff tools and things. K9S, I'll show that in a bit, but that's my Kubernetes GUI that I use. Oh, not mine, the Kubernetes GUI that I use. NeoVim, so this, I'll talk a bit about this in a bit. I'll come back to this, but I'll have another video going in depth about all my plugins and that kind of thing. On my posh, so this is as we saw. So if I split my screen now, then we can see the thing, the stuff I mentioned before here. We can see up here. So like path is this segment. If I scroll down, I've got Git, which is this bit. Execution of last time, execution time of last command, which is here. If a command failed, it'll show me something here that has failed. And my KA test context, Kubernetes context, and memory. So that's all in here. PowerShell. So this directory alias is the one of the reasons why it's not public. I've got aliases in PowerShell, which quickly take me to different directories, and some of those are client folders. So I didn't really I don't really want that public. And I also want the freedom to put stuff in my config which isn't public. And my profile, so I've got a bunch of aliases. So like if I type D, that's short for Docker, DN short for .NET, 
git g short for git. So I've got some aliases there. Um, some paths set up. VS Code, Windows Terminal, so Windows Terminal, which is all of this. We've got some settings. Um, I'm, I won't go through this, this is just my Windows Terminal config. But one nice thing about Windows Terminal is we've got like different tabs, which is quite powerful. You've already seen the split, so I can resize the splits. Uh, I can do one going horizontally. So I can do different horizontal and vertical splits. And I find this quite useful. So if I'm in Vim and I drop this down here, I can do git command so I can see git status. If I, let's just make a change in here, whatever. Oops, ah, sorry. Oh, right, that's failing because I can't, that's not valid. Let's change a different file then. No, git ignore, let's just shove something in here. And then we can see if I press enter now, we can see that my git information has changed. So there's changes. If I just do git add, git commit, then we can see that I've got Vim in here because Vim is my default editor. I can make a change. And this is one thing I like about this setup. I do a lot on the command line and everything's in the same terminal. So if I have to make a git change, so I'll undo this later, you can see that I've done it in line. And if I say something of another command, so I do docker help, which dumps out this, I can also do pipe it to Vim and have that in Vim. If I, I mentioned K9S before, if I load this up, and if I say edit one of my pods, press E, then again, it's opened my default editor. So I can edit this in Vim, which I'm quite used to. So it's really powerful having all of this together in the same experience. And if I'm doing .NET stuff, I can do .NET build or .NET watch. So as I'm making changes up here, it's automatically hot reloading, which is quite nice. Let's undo that. So I mentioned that setup before actually this, so this is the same file that's in here. And so the next question is we've got one Git repository with all of this stuff in. How do I get these different pieces of software to look in this folder? And the answer is symbolic links. And that's what this setup does. So we can see this is kind of like an array of objects, source and destination strings saying that so my git config file i actually want to remap to the current directory so this git config in here same with vim same with windows terminal same with k9s etc so you can see i just loop through each one and set up a symbolic link again that's in that blog post powershell i just this dot in powershell is a load so i'm just saying load like this profile, and I'm doing this to, my, to these folders. So hopefully that's a useful introduction to my setup. I'll include a link down below to that blog post with the setup.ps1 script in it. And for the NeoVim stuff, I'm gonna do a more in-depth separate video to go more into my plugins and that kind of thing. Cool, so see you next time.